Hello, Simon Kids. Kathy Appelt here. I'm here today to share my new book called Once Upon a Camel. And um, I want to tell you that the background that you're seeing is some of the interior art from the book, which um, my friend Eric Roman did. He's, he's a wonderful artist. Some of you may know that he won the Caldecott um, years ago. He's that great. He's, and so he, this is some of the interior art that he did for this novel. So um, I thought it'd be fun to share with you. So, okay, I'm gonna read the first chapter to you. And um, all you need to know is that it's about an old camel. Her name is Zada, which I named her in honor of Scheherazade, the famous, the most famous storyteller of all time. And so that's Zada. And there are two other characters in this first chapter. Their names are Perlita and Pard and they are American kestrels, which is um, the American kestrel is the smallest in the falcon family. So they're tiny, tiny little kestrels and they're super busy and super smart and super fast. So if you ever see them, they're like zinging and zooming. So, and, and the story takes place in the foothills of the Chisos Mountains, which is in far West Texas in what is now known as Big Bend National Park. So, um, so it takes place in 1910. So here we go. Chapter one. Incoming! Even in her sleep, Zada recognized that voice. The old camel raised one eyelid. It was still dark. She did not recall setting an early alarm bird. Zada settled deeper into her sandy furrow yawned. But before she could drift back off, here it came, a high-speed bundle of flapping kestrel feathers. American kestrel, to be specific, smallest of the falcon family, and it barreled directly towards Zada's face. Peck, peck, peck. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Zada, wake up. Perlita, in a pecking frenzy. Ouch, 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 and more ouch. Any chance for more sleep was now fully dashed. Zada, Perlita said, it's the worst news. Perlita did a little hoppity hop dance on Zada's nose. Then she puffed herself up, so anxious she could hardly contain herself. Zada waited. Perlita puffed. Long pause. More puffy. Long pause number two. Puff, puff, puff. Long pause, number 5,863. Extreme puffing. Finally, Zada couldn't stand it. Chirp it out, she said. At last, Perlita, still maximally puffed, cut loose with a dizzying trail of words that quickly turned into a torrent, which she strung together into an array of please and killies. As best Saudi could make out, Perlita's monologue went something like, there's a mountain coming toward us. A huge, huge mountain, the tallest in history. And it's so big and so tall. It's taking up the entire world, the entire universe. And it's moving our way. Perlita's voice had gone so fevered that it made Sada wince even without the message that was attached to it. And the message was something like this. It's going to eat us, Sada. I'm telling you, there's a mountain coming our way. It's sucking everything up into its big, big, big behemoth belly. Zada looked around. It was still dark, but she could tell by the thin rays of the dawn's early light that the Chiso sat squarely in the same place as they'd always sat. She could see their peaks right where they should be, just below the stars. I don't see anything, said Zada, trying to fathom what on earth had ruffled Perlita's feathers. You can't see it from here, said Perlita, her distress growing by the second. It's coming across the canyon. The canyon, asked Zada. From their vantage point near the creek, the canyon was hidden behind a set of ridges and a wide plateau. Ordinarily, Zada avoided the canyon. When she stood at the top of it and stared down at its steep, jagged walls, it made her dizzy. Standing at the bottom of it and looking up at its steep, jagged walls, she got woozy. 
Of course, a canyon is not a problem for a kestrel. Perlita flew over it all the time, which was how she had spotted the moving mountain, which she was sure was going to eat them, which made her peck, peck, peck. Ouch! Zada wrinkled her nose. Oh, sorry, said Perlita, catching herself mid-frenzy. A tuft of camel fur was caught in the side of her mouth, or on the side of her beak. She flapped into the air, and zip! She buzzed again, first one way, then the other. Then she shot straight up, banked, made a death-defying U-turn mid-air. Zip! She buzzed back the other way and paused in front of Zada's face, only long enough to say, the mountain, it's eating everything, even the stars. But Perlita, Zada tried to follow her flight when zing, a second blurry object blew by her face. Pard, Perlita's one and only. He zoomed by so fast he made the stars blink. Then he circled back and landed right between the camel's eyes. Zada, he exclaimed, there's a mountain. It's going to eat us. So that's the end of chapter one. I hope that was exciting for you. And um, I'm going to try to share the, the cover so you can see what a beautiful cover it is and how happy I am that Eric Roman did the art. So here it is. So I hope you can see that. All right, Birdaroos, um, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for sharing this moment with me. Hope you enjoy the new book. Adios. Mm -hmm.